Hey, what's up? This is Chosen, and in this video, I'm going to talk about this post on Reddit that claims to be some leaked information on Diablo 4, and I'm going to read through this and let you know how realistic I think it is, and just give you my general take on this leak uh, here on Reddit, so let's get into it. Alrighty, so first of all, uh, you know, right now is a little bit of a slower time on Diablo Immortal. We're waiting for what is supposed to be a pretty significant patch here coming up in a couple weeks. We're waiting for people to transition into Hell 5 and stuff like that. So definitely still playing Diablo Immortal, still covering it a lot, but I do want to keep you in the loop on the Diablo community and Diablo 4 as well here on the channel. Also over on our website, I've got a full breakdown of when I expect Diablo 4 to be released and talking about that and then predicting and different things that are covering Diablo 4. I'll link to that down below for whatever Diablo game you play, Diablo Immortal, Diablo 4, and that type of stuff. But I want to dive into this. Um, also, this is not going to be officially from Blizzard, and I don't know any insider information. So I'm just giving you a general perspective of somebody who's been in the Diablo community for 20 years, and it's not going to be anything you can take to the bank and officially believe. We'll talk about how plausible it is. So it starts out, this has come from some player who is in the friends and family beta and has told a close friend about this information. <laughs> Anytime something starts like that, you got to take it with a grain of salt. Like, I heard this from a friend of a friend, and someone's uncle said this. So, very back alley type of stuff. But sometimes it ends up being true. Most of the time, it ends up not being. Uh, maybe to create hype, it has been leaked. Uh, he gave me details on the features of the game, mostly things not known already. So, trading. It will be very limited. Rare, legendary, set, unique items, along with gold, cannot be traded. Rare items have been tradable early in this phase in the beta, but since it leads to some of the most powerful items when rolled properly in conjunction with giving them legendary power, they are now untradable. The main reason why Blizzard does not want free trading, according to the leaker, is is because track uh, trading does not make the gameplay better along with numerous other problems it brings blizzard is working on ways to make the game more social without the need for trading so again without any insider knowledge uh just kind of reacting to the to my personal opinions i would say this is plausible this is believable uh this would be a stance i would expect blizzard to have uh you know i was around when diablo 3 launched and it had pretty much open trade uh it had a, an in-game auction house a real money auction house you could trade most anything i'm trying to i mean it's been like 12 years at this point i'm trying to remember i think you could trade most stuff um and it was kind of a disaster with it with how it worked within the system some games pull it off well a lot of people feel that trading is extremely positive in diablo 2 and Path of Exile, but in Diablo 3, it was awful. So it depends a lot on the game and the community and kind of how things go along. It was a big problem in Diablo 3 because you had all these massive botting operations that were flooding the market with so many items that anything you would find as an individual player grinding was going to be worthless. So you were better off spending $1 than playing for 20 hours. You would just get way more return on that investment because the market was so flooded. Because of that, they had to remove open trade and remove the auction house to save Diablo 3. So it does not surprise me at all that they're going to really try to explore some sort of middle ground where we have trading because players definitely love trading and managing marketplaces and stuff like that, but without trying to ruin the game. So, so far, I think this is plausible. It goes on to say the details on what can be traded haven't been given. Smart loot. This feature will be making a return, but you will still be able to find godly items for other classes as well. It might be 85, 15 like Diablo 3, though the numbers might not be final. So if you're not familiar with what they mean here, smart loot is finding gear that is for your class. For instance, if you're playing a necromancer, uh, do you find items for a barbarian or not? If you don't, it means you're getting necromancer smart loot tailored to your character or if it's just open loot, you're a necromancer that finds things for a druid, a sorceress, a rogue, a barbarian, and everything. So uh, in Diablo 3, you can find stuff for other classes, but it is heavily skewed to be mostly drops for your class, which the community mostly seems to like that way of doing it. It's kind of a nice little middle ground. 
drop rates. They will be nothing like Diablo 3. The reigning legendary set items system is gone. The godlike items in Diablo 4 will be somewhat close to Diablo 2 godly drop rates. Since there is smart loot, it's much more likely that you will get items for your class. This is a happy medium between Diablo 2's super rare drops and Diablo 3's smart loot. This system I really like is what they say personally. Okay, again, all of that is pretty plausible. Uh, Diablo 2, it's much harder to get drops than in a game like Diablo 3, where it is raining and it's very quick and easy to get a build started. And then the grind is optimizing and getting ancient drops, getting primal drops, augmenting your gear, stuff like that. So uh, it, it definitely rains items in Diablo 3 like, like no other Diablo game. Gambling. This feature is coming back and will work slightly different than Diablo 2. Gold is going to be much more useful since your gold is uncapped. You don't need to manage it like in Diablo 2 with your full inventory of charms. You can also pay gamblers extra gold for higher chance to get powerful items. I like that as a gold sink. Uh, and then in addition to that, you can also sell unidentified items to them at much better prices if uh, than if they were identified. That's kind of a cool idea. I like that. It depends on the quality of the item itself. Selling unneeded items is very useful to get extra gold while it's useless to do so in Diablo 3. And then they say this is quite interesting. Um, I agree. I think that is quite interesting. Again, this isn't guaranteed true information, but that's plausible because I think that's a, a decently fun mechanic and, and some cool ideas. Crafting and gathering. This system is getting updated heavily from Diablo 3. There are numerous resources you can find in the world to collect. It takes almost no time to gather them, so they are, vir they are virtually will not slow down the action of combat. Craftable items include potions, gems, weapons, armor, and certain rare materials that can modify your gear. Some are found from monsters and others in gathering. I think most of this sounds fine. I just hope if they're going to have a bunch of different stuff that you're gathering, that they make it auto loot. Uh, it's really annoying that, to have to go around and click on like 10 different things individually while you're trying to speed farm and be efficient. So I hope they enable you to have a pet or something that'll run around and, and gather stuff or have it vacuum within your pickup radius or something. Instead of uh, like in Diablo 2, you have to click on like every individual thing to pick it up. Uh, they did make gold auto pickup, which was super nice in the remastered version. But anyway, just hopefully they, they kind of implement that properly. Um, I have personal mixed feelings about this kind of system, but it does feel very exciting. Hopefully it turns out great. Then they talk about SSF. If you're not familiar, that means solo self found. This mode has been debated by Blizzard's team and it will 100% not be coming to Diablo 4 ever. Uh, they would have to release numerous modes for it since there is no free trade. It's just redundant to have it. Blizzard wants to avoid splitting the player base up. Uh, that's plausible because that is a stance that Blizzard has taken before in all sorts of different games, uh, like Diablo, or, or I mean, uh, all sorts of, like, Diablo Immortal, how they don't have, like, a, like, a grouped, uh, PvP, they just kind of put everybody into one PvP because they don't want to segment the player base, and we've seen this in different games, like Overwatch and, and stuff like that, although they, they, they are a little bit more open in Overwatch to segmenting things because the player base for Overwatch was always so big. But I do agree completely with splitting up the player base being a bad thing. It's why I always kind of wanted to find a hybrid between softcore and hardcore and get everybody in one player base and, and, and unite the two player bases. Like, uh, I think... I think Diablo 3 did a pretty good job, honestly, with having a blend between softcore and hardcore. Uh, like the, the hardcore mode in Diablo 3 has cheat death procs and and uh, all sort of like get out of jail free cards and, and you can gear up quickly. It's easy to save backup gear with the blood shards and the gambling and the targeting things and, and you can uh, power level friends super fast. So I think Diablo 3 could almost just cram everybody into one player base and call it their current hardcore mode. So uh, I would I would hopefully they explore some sort of option like that where dying certainly matters. You definitely want to avoid it, but it's not this catastrophic event that makes you want to alt F4 delete the game.
So yeah, all in all, um, you know, obviously this is not official information, but it does seem decently plausible that this stuff would be mostly true. Like I wouldn't be shocked if this, if all this stuff ended up being true, it seems pretty reasonable and decently credible. We just have to also keep in mind that even if this is 100% credible, it doesn't mean that it's guaranteed to actually uh, hit the live game when it releases. We are still probably about a calendar year from Diablo 4 coming out. And when games are moving like this in development, things can change insanely fast and end up wildly different than what they thought back in like the alpha and the beta and the development phase of the game. So anyway, let me know what you think down below and uh, if you think it's plausible or not and some of your opinions on these topics. I think it's going to be a huge deal for Blizzard to get Diablo 4 right. It is... Uh, yeah, it, I, I read, it looks like they're saying the right things in terms of completely avoiding the pay-to-win stuff and, and buying power for your character and trying to blend Diablo 2, Path of Exile, Diablo 3, and kind of get the best of all universes into one game. They're saying the right things in terms of sentiment, and let's hope they uh, let's hope they get it right and that next year is a big year for the Diablo year, uh, the Diablo community. But anyway, remember to subscribe on your way out if you enjoy daily Diablo content, and I will see. You soon in the next video. Thanks for watching. Have a good rest of your weekend. Peace.